Everybody ready? Here we go. We're ready to start the presentation. Everybody good? Mr. Schlangbaum. You ready, Mr. Schlangbaum? Okay. Welcome. All right, so this is the first meetup of the Tech Biz. Hopefully, I'll uh, be hosting more speakers also for topics that are around entrepreneurship. Um, uh, tonight's meetup is going to be uh, the customer's online journey. So what I really want to talk about today is uh, pretty much how your brand can get discovered online. If you already work for a company, this can be good for you. In the, if you work in the marketing department, if you work for the sales department, if you're just interested in, uh, in networking with people via the internet, uh, if you want to do influencer marketing, finding influencers in your niche, this is also going to be helpful for you. Uh, I've been working um, I, um, I've been working on this presentation for about two weeks, so I hope you guys really enjoy it. It's pretty much my favorite, uh, my favorite tool that I've discovered um, over time. And uh, all right, so let's get started. Okay, so um, let's talk. Uh, the, the name of the meetup is the customer's online journey because I um, personally I studied literature, so I see a lot of the things in, in terms of uh, in terms of literature. And journey is a big word. Um, in terms of storytelling, because I think you, you definitely have today a lot, a lot of platforms. There's enough platforms in order to, to get your message out there, but you also need to have a really good story um, in order to hook the reader from the, be from the beginning. It's a lot, a lot of psychology, a lot, a lot of storytelling. So um, the question is how you're gonna be telling your story. It's not, it's not the classic uh, read a book for, for five hours. It's not the it's not watch a movie for an hour and a half. You're splitting up your story in, in this type of, uh, this type of uh, fashion. So um, uh, your, uh, some of the visitors to your site might start off over here. We're going to talk also where they're coming from, where you can get them from. But they might um, visit your site. They're going to bounce off. Eventually, maybe a week later, if you were smart and you got their email, you tempted them to give you their email, then they're going to get in, um, they're going to get your branded emails. Uh, you could also use retargeting. We'll talk a little bit about that tonight, also. And uh, eventually, the main, the main, uh, the main purpose of all, of all your marketing efforts is going to be to get the visitor to come right on back, and then eventually make the purchase. Sometimes it's hard to get them to to take that action that you want them to take on the very first try. So it's good to to kind of think long term of uh, how you're going to be able to build that relationship online. Okay, uh, the table of contents. So um, uh, first, part one is going to be uh, getting your head straight. It's a couple of techniques that I like to think of. I'm sure if anybody else in this, we have a lot of uh, people here that um, have experiences in different industries. If you were to write this type of presentation, you might have gone about it differently. But when I think about, about this topic, this is usually how, how I like to think of it in my own head. You need to think like a rock star. And we'll go into that a little bit. You need to think like a screenwriter and you need to think like a salesman. Then we're going to go into two more prerequisites. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to talk about why it's important to buy a strawberry plant. It's not, it's not completely necessary, but um, uh, uh, I know somebody that's selling stra strawberry plants also, and there's a link to his Facebook profile as well, so you can definitely <laughs> feel free to contact him. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it was a good opportunity in order to talk about uh, his strawberry What's plant. your commission? <laughs> no, I'm not getting a commission. Well <laughs> that's a lot of my personal agenda. That's, that's my personal <laughs> agenda for tonight, is to get rid of these <laughs> strawberry plants. <laughs> All right. Uh, then I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, investing in your profile pictures. Uh, and finally, part three and is going to be throwing leads into the top of the funnel. So uh, depending on your niche, how you're going to discover your tar the target audience of your niche and how to invest wisely even from the beginning on your incoming traffic. Um, uh, part four, building trust and nurturing leads. And part five is listening digitally measurement tools. So I think part three, four, and five is pretty much going to be a cycle. Those are, those are the stages that you're going to keep on repeating. You're going to be buying incoming traffic. You're going to measure how long they're staying for. Uh, you're going to try to build trust with them online. And eventually, you're also going to want to set conversion goals, set, set goals for yourself. This is what I want people to take on my site. And we'll talk a little bit about how to put Google Analytics, uh, set up Google Analytics conversion goals. Um, 
whoever's interested, um, I'll probably stick around a little after the lecture if you want to help, some help setting up uh, working with Google Analytics also. Okay, this is the link to this presentation called Think Like a Rockstar. Um, I'll also send this, uh, send you guys the presentation. It's jam-packed with links, so you can feel free uh, to explore any of these, um, explore any of this independently also. Okay. Can you turn back? Will you send it to the turn meetup out. group? Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to the meetup group. Yeah, yeah, I'll okay. post it. Yeah, yeah, I'll send it to you guys on the meetup group. All right, so it's jam-packed with link. With links, I thought that that Think Like a Rockstar presentation is really, really good. It's got a lot of helpful points. I think if, if, you're, uh, if you're in marketing, then you just need to think, think like that. Um, begin thinking of how, how uh, if, you were, if you had an audience filled with 10,000 people, what would you be telling them? How would you set up the story? Um, okay, and then uh, number two is think like a screenwriter. So I had a mentor that was a screenwriter. He, he writes, I think, today for Comedy Central. He moved back, back to LA. And uh, he taught me a lot of really good things. He, he shared with me this book called Save the Cat. And um, I thought that it was a really excellent, uh, a really excellent structure. Because it, assuming on your product, let's say it takes, it takes two weeks to, to convert an average customer. So you're going to want to be telling them a story, right? You may want to have some sort of main character, has a problem. Um, and here, here's a... Uh, uh, this, this book pretty much states that every single movie pretty much follows the exact same 15 beats. Um, and uh, you can watch, go back and, and start uh, thinking about this when you're watching your next film of whether it follows this type of structure. So it'll start with an opening image, a theme stated, a setup, a catalyst. Um, maybe the, the, the main character is thrown into a specific adventure. Something happens, someone gets killed, someone messes with him. He needs to fight back. Uh, he, it's, there's a debate of whether he should go on an adventure. Um, then it's going to break into two. There might be a, a sub-story added to it. It's going to be a midpoint. And uh, pretty much at like the last three quarters of the movie, usually the bad guys will, clo will close in. Uh, the, the main character is going to feel like all is lost. Um, and do this with anything. Do this with Dumb and Dumber or uh, you know, Beauty and the Beast, pretty much anything. Right, you get really, really excited. It's going to be the midpoint, the fun and games. Then it's going to be the dark night of the soul. The character is going to feel um, really, really sad and like all hope is lost. And then eventually, finally, he's going to get to the climax. He's going to overcome it, and he's, he's finally in, it, in his new world. So that's a, it's got some really good resources. You can learn more about that, uh, about basic story structure also, basic screenwriting story structure. Uh, okay. Um, finally, I thought this was a really good book. I found it in a used bookshop. It's called The Five Great Rules of Selling. And I think in marketing, you're definitely doing a lot of selling. Uh, you're, it's not usually as aggressive as, as the salespeople will, will be doing it. In an organization, maybe it'll be two weeks of marketing material that the customer will be exposed to before he starts talking to the, um, to the salesperson. But you should also be thinking like the salesperson. So uh, what's, what's the unique selling point? Of your um, of your specific product, what what might be the uh, the possible objections of the buyer? Who, who's the competitors, and and why you have uh, why you think it, uh, your your product is superior? So be sure to throw in your unique selling point while you're telling your story. So that's why I say, if you want to create great marketing material, so you should also be thinking uh, like a salesperson, like a rock star, and a screenwriter. Okay, I also, um, personally, I, I, I really enjoy learning online, and uh, I have uh, these three gurus that I think are, are really fantastic. I uh, watch a lot of their videos, and I think they're some really good salespeople. Um, we, uh, I put there a link to three different videos. It's Tony Robbins. Did anybody here see the Tony Robbins documentary, by chance? Anyone else here that's a fan of Tony Robbins? No. Okay, did you see the documentary? No, uh, the documentary is really, really good, and I think the, the reason why I put it up is because they, they have material that um, uh, it gives inspiration and it gives motivation, and um, it's also just entertaining. So I think in terms of your marketing material, um, it's not going to be a problem to get your message out there. The question is whether people actually want to listen, and uh, if people want to listen and if people are clicking on your ads, um, uh, they, they're, if they're enjoying your, the story you're telling them, it's going to be a lot cheaper for you, 
also. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, okay, and Jay Abraham, he's, he's got really good sales tips also, and Les Brown, he's, he's got really good stuff, and there's videos over there you can feel free to explore it independently if, if you feel like you're lacking creativity or, or you're lacking inspiration, so feel free to check those out. Okay, bam, so now we're getting to the, uh, to the customer's actual journey, so um, let's talk a little bit about, uh, <coughs> uh, about the marketing funnel. So, this is pretty much when you think of um, a, um, a funnel that, that you pour uh, wine back into the bottle, you're gonna have that little piece, it, and uh, it's, it's got that, uh, it's wide on the top, and eventually it just gets thinner and thinner, and the wine will go into the bottle, so just think of it like that. Um, you're throwing your leads into, into the very top. So the question is, um, first of all, how much money or how much energy do you want to put in every single stage of, of this journey? Like for example, um, uh, you may have heard of Google PPC, and uh, we can uh, we can also I'm gonna I brought some some markers also, so I may use the um, the board soon. But uh, Google PPC, for example, is when someone does a Google search, um, uh, you can put your ad ad right at the top if they're. Uh, if, uh, let's say, you're selling tickets to India, if someone searches travel to India, it's going to cost you something like $10 uh, every time that someone clicks on your ad. So $10 for one click is incredibly expensive. And um, if you're going to spend all your money on, on, uh, on, on getting those leads into your funnel, you might not have enough money left over for nurturing your leads uh, via retargeting ads uh, or other methods. And you might um, uh, you might not have money for, for later on down the line. So uh, that's that's the real question for yourself for your own business. Think about how much money you want to put on every single one of these channels, and we'll talk about um, uh, a little bit about uh, the different tools that you can use in every single one of these uh, channels. Yeah. You can. Yeah, you have a question? Uh, if you want to decide uh, how much to put on a click, you should uh, use the Google AdWords Key Planner. You can. Uh, take a keywords that describe your business, and you can find an approximately um, estimated uh, price for pay or click. It's a great uh, tool to use. A fantastic point. No, or by the way, you should join the meetup group. Click join us, and then put it yeah. on the uh, on the comments. Okay. But I think people will appreciate it. Uh, fine. So. Uh, in terms of the lead generation, I think we're going to talk today about the Facebook ads. Facebook ads is going to be relatively uh, low cost also. It's an alternative to the PPC. And you can get, uh, and I'll show you also some of those, those costs today, how much it's going to cost you. You can show it to about 30,000 people for about um, maybe 100 shekels, something like that. And then if, and, uh, we'll talk a little bit about um, different tools. Uh, diff we'll talk a little bit about affiliate advertising also, how to find the right affiliates for your business. And, um, and in terms of lead nurturing, we'll talk a little bit about automated emails, which is, and uh, we'll also talk about retargeting ads. Okay, so we got the lead nurturing and then we got the, the, the sale, right? So that, that last slide ended on the sales. One sec. We got the right generating interest, awareness, intent. Eventually, they're going to be thinking, thinking, considering, and then finally, they're going to get to the purchase, right? But the journey doesn't begin there. Even after they purchase that first time, you can still, uh, you should still be thinking about those people that that purchase. And this is from that that presentation called "Think Like a Rock Star." And it said like this: that you have on the left side, you have size of market, and on the right side, you have uh, brand brand loyalty. And it said most companies focus here. Most companies focus on the moment that someone uh, that someone purchases for the first time, and they'll be thinking, oh, there's about a thousand people that purchased today, so I should just focus on that a thousand people. But uh, according to that slide, it said most rock stars focus here. You can also be getting a lot of value if you focus on your brand advocates. Maybe about 5% are going to be really, really diehard fans. They're going to think, uh, they're going to believe in the ideals of your product and so on. And, they, and if you tap into, if you invest more in them, you, uh, um, however, however you can, right? Think, of, think about your own ways of investing in your brand advocates. And then hopefully they can do some of that work uh, independently. Everybody's got their own social networks today, so everybody's got... Um, uh, think of it pretty much like a ripple effect that uh, every single uh, every single drop in a pond 
will end up expanding outwards to their personal network. So if you're tapping into that type, type of thinking, that every single person that likes my post, every single person that shares it is going to be expanding it exponentially. So it's, uh, it might help you out also, and it's a, another dif different approach to, to what you might think. So this is pretty much uh, a little bit more of the customer's journey of how to, how to get uh, your customers to repurchase. Um, I put over here a link to, to um, a blog post by, I think, the, the marketing officer of Mint.com. Mint.com is a personal finance management tool. You can upload all your credit cards um, and your investments over there. And then uh, and it, it works with affiliate marketing. They're sending you all these uh, credit card deals and, and bank deals. And uh, I thought that he had a really good strategy. They, they built, uh, listen to this, a 20K email list before even launching, which is kind of interesting. We'll take the questions at the end. A 20K email list even before launching, and uh, that's kind of an interesting approach because a lot of companies these days, uh, they're just incredibly, incredibly stressed all the time to make the hard sale. Make sure that this email says uh, you, have another, you have another two days before this offer expires. Be very, very aggressive. Personally, I like the more of a mild, mild marketing style, and I think they did a really good job also, and he said like this, we wanted to have a lot of people aware of us for trust reason. A lot of personal finance people, that's their, their niche. The longer you know about something, likely the more you'll trust it. Because it's, it was a, a product that necessitated a lot of trust in the brand. And he said uh, they did influencer marketing with stage two. It said, we found smaller bloggers with passionate readers and sponsored their blog for periods of, at a time great relationship builder with influential, influential writers. That's kind of an interesting approach. They were very successful. They sold for 170, 170 million, um, and they just scaled really, really rapidly. It's a very respected um, marketing strategy. And finally, so they tracked down the influencers. Uh, who are the people that are making a lot of noise in this field? Who's trusted? How can we get on their good side and get them to endorse us to their, to their followers? And finally, it said, we tracked all the cost slash conversion to see which keywords, sites, methods were the most effective. Make sure you do this all the time so you are not burning money. And that's also really, really important um, to, uh, to, to be sure that you're always measuring it. And we'll talk a little bit about measurement today. There's more about that blog post in the link. OK, two more prerequisites is uh, get your photographer friend to take pictures to take photos of you and spread the best ones across your social profiles. Most of the time, it'll only cost you about 100 shekels to invest in your own profile pictures. And um, my, my friend Hannah also takes pictures. Uh, so you can feel free to contact her. That, there's a link there. And, uh, or you can take the pictures on your own. Just make sure to put on your best wedding clothes. It's because you're, you're sending emails all the time, bottom line. So that way, even if you're sitting in your underwear, you're still uh, in your Gmail photo. You're still going to have a picture of you in a suit. And um, you can spread it also to your LinkedIn profile and, um, and your Facebook. And, and I think it's a, it's a good investment. Some people just don't think about it. And finally, um, we'll talk a little bit about the strawberry plant. Uh, just be patient. Uh, a lot of times, if, if, you, uh, if you put your message out there, um, you're going to feel incredibly self-conscious, I think, at the beginning. Uh, when you're trying to tell a story or you're sending an email to a thousand people, and you're going to usually want immediate results. But I, I personally bought, bought a, stra a strawberry plant from this guy, and I thought it was a really good experience. I've had it so far for about two to three months, and it just teaches you that it takes a really, really long time for the, for the strawberry plant to grow. Right, a lot of times today we're going into the supermarket, you buy it, and you think that it's all instantaneous, but it's not. It takes a really long time for it to grow, so definitely put, put in the necessary uh, patience. Okay, part three is throwing leads into the top of your funnel. Can I have a question? Yeah, sure. So what you're saying, okay. if, I, if I understand, mm -hmm. is that uh, uh, it's very hard to just see someone, and convert. You need to build a relationship several times, blah, 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 and then something like this? Yeah, I think that that's a much much more efficient approach. It'll just, it'll give you more stamina also for the long run also. 
it'll keep you more optimistic and there's a Maybe lot of to tools. last you to heal your several yeah. times and eventually okay. yeah, yeah yeah so that's that's the main thing and the question is um, who are the people online that are most likely to trust you if the, if the customer already has a need there's a lot there's a much more higher chance that he's gonna convert so for example there's this site called BuzzSumo BuzzSumo is a really cool site let's say you put in a search called big data um, what it's going to do is it's going to look online for all the content across all the different channels that, um, that have the word big data in the title, in the title of the content. And then it's going to tell you, this is the most popular piece uh, um, from all the social networks about big data. So um, Feedly? And, uh, I don't know exactly what Feedly is. It's possible. Okay. And it'll say, okay, this, this piece got 154,000 shares on Facebook. It got a 7.5k uh, shares on Twitter and so on and so forth. So it's a really good. Uh, is it too loud? Did I tell you that? No, we're just looking at the header. Oh no, I need to. I reserved it. So. Seven to nine. Uh, they put the the word content journey out there, so I assume that it did. All right. Well. Yeah, Miss Amin Betesha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, fine. So that's a little bit about that. Um, uh, so you can definitely check that out even before you start buying ads, because you can buy ads on each of these networks. Uh, you have the 30-day trial, and, um, and then they start cost charging you money. What I do, I have uh, five Gmail accounts also. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean by ads? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. Very Jewish, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. All right, what so, do you mean so that's by important. Ads? We're going to get more in, into that a little bit later. We're going to go right. deeper into that. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, so if you have five Gmail accounts, you just wait until the, the, the first one expires, then, then, you, then you resubscribe with your second email account, and you'll... Uh, five is standard here. Huh? Five, five is standard. Five is standard. Yeah, it's yeah. Standard. yeah. yeah see? This guy's been in the business. <laughs> <laughs> see? <laughs> just, all right, we're going to put the morality on the shelf. Right? We're putting... <laughs> And that's also going to come into play with a couple of other it's things, too. It's to build a script that will generate new accounts. It's a startup of its own, I'm telling you. Okay. I think this is also a really good tool. It's called the I Search From. And um, it's, uh, it's pretty much, um, so this is, this is going into, wow. into that, um, that thought process of getting into your customer's state of mind. So, uh, for example, um, I was working for a company that was doing trips to Israel from America. So we needed to, um, we actually were doing internships in Israel. It was a Masa, Masa thing. Fine. And so this was a really helpful tool. I put into here internships in Israel. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's, it's as if I was searching from America the words internship in Israel. And that was also really helpful because um, once I did this search, um, I was able to get th this uh, this results over here. So it's like a proxy. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, a, so a, a proxy. It, it simulates from it simulates as if you're doing a Google search from a different country. Yeah. So if your target audience if your target audience is in a different country, you want to know what are the first if if they're going to search your product online or something similar to your product. They have a need. They have the need that you that you match. The question is, what are the top sites? That, uh, that appear when they search for, in for each your product. Country, different? Uh, yeah, every country it's totally different. Yeah. And even Google suggests <coughs> it's different for different countries. Um, what of I wanted Deadwood. to say, sorry? Of course, Deadwood or uh, yeah. the Edge are different. Uh, what I was also going to add is uh, there is a Chrome extension. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it is called Gail Clever or something like that. So you can also install that. And it will give you the option, like nearby the tools, yeah. uh, to select. Uh, What's it called? Geo Clever? I think so. I'll double check. Ah, yeah, yeah, feel free to share it on the comments yeah. if you want. I'll yeah, share well, it. Then That'd be really good. Yeah. Okay, fine. Because because uh, sometimes this is going to be more worthwhile for you. So. Um, for example, if, if somebody s does a search internships in Israel, I could pay Google. Um, I could I could start uh, trying to compete with the other people that are advertising and putting PPC up there in the top two. That might cost me something like ten dollars, fifteen dollars, whatever, five to ten dollars, depending on the niche. Um, or I could try to um, uh, go, go through each of these sites, check if they have an affiliate program, check if I can advertise on their sites. How much does it cost? And then eventually I'm going to start measuring it. Well, I was able to get a thousand, a thousand people 
we ended up advertising on GoOverseas.com, and that ended up being a lot more worthwhile than, than any of the other. How can uh, you advertise? You approach them and say, Yeah, you, you send them an email. Yeah, you an send email? them an email. Um, so, a lot of times their businesses are already framed around. They already understand that they're... Uh, that, that people want to yeah. advertise there. How do you ask about You send them an email to their contact. How do you, do it? you send them an email first into the contact, hey, what's happening, we do this and this. You check okay. what their email is. I was wondering if it's possible to advertise on your site. And most of the time, uh, they'll say, yeah, no but problem. How do you this make is the, how much it costs. How do you make the ad? How do you? Um, In Google, I know how to do it. It's automatic. How do you do it? How do you write the ad? No, you're you're you write, but. I'll give you an example. Yeah. What do you um, tell like them? About the shots, what? With this, with this, uh, it's a, it's always going to be specific. But you need to start doing research. Like for example, with the site Go Overseas, I clicked on Go Overseas. Uh, I sent them an email. We're an internship provider. I wanted to know if uh, how much does it cost to feature okay. our product on your site. And they said it, it uh, will feature. It, it was a search tool. This Go Overseas is a search tool, and um, they said. Uh, they said, yeah, it costs uh, fifty dollars a month, and we'll be able to. We're going to show your intern intern program to all of the people that search internships in Israel via our site. But what do you send? And this JPEG, is how much. <coughs> what? An email? No, no, no everything is different. Everything yeah, is different. Sir. They say they say here, follow this structure. They, you give us the title, give us the length. Uh, okay. They already gave us a structure. That's already for independent After research. Everything is totally. All of these sites okay. are totally independent. They all have a different a different flow. Okay. All right, uh, another really good company for, for finding your target audience. Yeah, 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 I like them a lot. I think they're really awesome. So they're called the uh, Similar Web. Uh, let's see, yeah. what does it do? How to see the stats on any website, helpful for analyzing competitors or potential partners. Anybody know this company? Anybody yeah. use yeah. this in the past? They have meetups. <laughs> what do they have? I think they have meetups. Which company? What do they do with about SimilarWeb.com? There's also a link there also they, at the top. I think they, I you can I check went to it. one of your meetups and they have an algorithm system. Did you enjoy it? No. Was yeah. there was there they coffee? They explain how to program a similar web. <laughs> <laughs> to program algorithms. And okay. Ah, it was more of a programming meetup? Yeah, I went after 20 minutes. Yeah, I was in stages, Interesting. so not, not in how to use their tool. <laughs> okay. Okay, I nice. Think it's this one. I think that they have a really, really good tool. It's really, really helpful. So um, uh, let's say, for example, uh, you're selling. This is in terms of the influencer marketing, because you remember that we talked about the mint.com. We found, it, it's, the guy said, we found uh, influencers in our niche, and we sponsored their blog for a, a given uh, period of time. And then we were able to uh, get, the, get the influencers to trust us, and then they already endorsed us to our target audience. And um, uh, this is a really good way to analyze whether somebody is, is even worth, worth your time. Uh, one second. Um, essentially what it's going to do is um, it's going to show you the engagement. So even if it's not your website, it's going to say uh, between the months of uh, whatever, September 16 to February 17, there were 1.8 million people that visited MrMoneyMustache.com, a personal finance blogger that's really, really popular. The, the majority of the audience is in the United States. That's going to be helpful for you. In Canada, United Kingdom, bounce rate means people that visited just one page and left. Um, is, is this, most of the time they're staying for 2.87 pages. The average person is staying for four minutes. So it's showing that people are really interested in what this influencer has to say. So I think that that's a really good tool. You have a question? Uh, yeah, how long does it take you to uh, gain influence with bloggers? You know, you said you talked about how you uh, approach bloggers. Okay. And you uh, sponsored your website on yeah. their blog. Okay. So how long did it take you to gain uh, influence on their uh, readers? Uh, yeah. So every single thing is is totally, totally, um, uh, it's totally, totally relative, relative to the bloggers. I mean, most of the time, um, bloggers are usually going to be open to advertisers writing them and saying, "Hey, I want to pay you a, a little bit. I want to sponsor you a little bit to." Uh, to, f to send out a link to my product uh, in one of your in one of your emails, um, and so uh, everything is relative. Just have just be nice, you know, and say I'm I'm interested in your blog. Most of the time, give them a give them a compliment, right? Give them a compliment. I think your blog is a fantastic resource for people that are interested in personal finance management. That's why I uh, I, I personally have this and this, and I think 
I'd love to do it. If you send out an email to like five, five different bloggers, maybe about, right, maybe 50% will get back to you, maybe 20%, but at least you tried. So the most important thing is that at least to just try. Do you use this tool to understand where do you want to publish? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so we're still at the very, very beginning. How to throw leads into the top of the funnel. This is uh, yeah, but, uh, you where you want to do the initial investment to get people to your yes, website. Yes, you said uh, that you use the I'm from. Yeah, I search from. I search yeah. from. Then yeah. you see the top type. Good. And then each one of them you search here to validate yeah, your exactly, search? exactly. Yeah, okay. take those sites it, when you're already starting to consider. Okay. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good clarification. And here, uh, okay. does it have uh, like free trial or it's? Uh, uh, one second. What with similar web? Yeah. Oh no, it's totally free. Okay. I know there are things that you premium. Premium, yeah. You want? You can pay if you want more. Yeah. If yeah, you want more specifics more. about it, yeah. if you want more specifics about the compa about the about like a random site that you don't you don't own, oh, then yeah. you mm -hmm. definitely will be able to do it. Bam, I got my permanent markers, all right? I got these about a, about a year ago. I haven't used them a lot, but I'm really excited to use them. So you guys are really, uh, all right? It's multicolored also, so we may go wild on the uh, on the permanent markers, on the, uh, hope sorry, temporary markers. markers right? I hope so, I hope so. But well? it's Google, so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Advertising on Facebook. All right. Did anyone see the uh, that that video of the dark side of, of Facebook or the dark side of the social network? How all the social networks are, are actually selling all the all the they know the they data, don't you all the data like of the all users. Yeah, they're compiled. All the social networks. Even your mental condition, they can know. Very good. Now, or excellent. All right. So um, they're always compiling stuff about their users, and advertisers can uh, can can uh, can target. Um, People sp uh, based off of this, the following uh, the following fields. Uh, first of all, custom audiences. You can upload um, your email database. If um, like you have 10,000 emails, you could also upload a, a file of the emails, and they're going to target. They're going to send your ads to the email list. Um, you could you could target ads according to location, according to age, the gender, the languages spoken, and also the interest. Also, so the interest is a is a really good thing too. And uh, we'll talk, and then if eventually you can, it's also going to show you how many people are, um, are within this specific, um, uh, um, based off of these parameters, we found, let's say, there are uh, 50,000 people that match this specific description, or, you know, 100,000 or 2 million. All right, let's see, day 10. Okay. Fine. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about the cost on advertising on Facebook. So, I did. I uh, I had a blog about uh, just just personal interest blog. Uh, one of them was about Tinder. One of them was about uh, my Rome trip, and one of them was uh, the epic battle between Blockbuster and Netflix. So I wanted to do some experiments to see how much it's going to cost me uh, on Facebook, and to just get my blog out there. So this is how much uh, how much it cost me. It said it, it's, it costs 18 agoro per link click. So that's really, really good also. Oh, per what? 18 agoro per, 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 per link click. Uh, so that means, um, so uh, I'll go into, into the specific. Like Let's say I wrote an article about Tinder, right? Um, I, said I got uh, 905 clicks for 158 shekels. It reached 38,000 people. And let's see how much it, it for. For 160 shekels, I reached 38,000 people. So that's really, really good also. Um, I was able to measure also, you can see on Google Analytics, uh, we can even get, get more specific about it later on, but uh, how long did those people stay on the site also? Uh, it just gives you a nice, a nice little idea. Uh, eventually also the Rome trip, it was 500, it was, it was 600 clicks for 130 shekels. You, you and pay the way for that the it showing works, the, not for the clicking, yeah? That doesn't matter. Or you pay a different price for, ah, for the showing? Uh, the that's clicking. up to you. You can choose um, You can choose um, okay. cost per impression or a cost per click. You could say, I want, I'm willing to spend a, a maximum of a, of a dollar on every click, or I'm willing to spend a maximum of five dollars for a thousand impressions, something like that. You, you, you can do like that's after the, the, the first 30 seconds. After the first 30 seconds? Yeah, before that, you cannot choose. Ah, okay. It's only impressions. Okay, okay. 
Oh, you don't have uh, an option to, to just do a daily budget allocation. Can you do it from Israel? What do you mean? You don't have the option of a daily budget? No, don't you have that option? I think yeah, you do. Yeah, you, you have the daily budget. Yeah, you choose. I, I want the campaign to run for two weeks. I want to get charged on the day. I want it to run for a day. You have a lot of stuff. You can you can do it. You, and, and pretty much anybody can can go and uh, and start their own account. Um, and you can spend as much as you want. Spend only 30 shekels if, if, if you want. But it's a good thing to just get a feel for. So let's talk for a second about the FB campaign. So I just want to give you an example that the, the way that the that the ad network works is that also with Google they're going to charge you less money if more people are clicking. So if uh, five percent of people are clicking on the ad, it's eventually going to cost you less money. So that's why it goes back to the beginning of, of uh, starting off with a good story and, and creating content that people are interested in, because the more people click, the cheaper it's going to be for you. And here's an example. Over here we have three campaigns. Right? It's a campaign. And uh, within every, every one of those campaigns, then you could put um, up to six advertisements or six blog posts. And, and um, depending on how many people click it, it's going to cost you less money. So if, uh, if ad, if, let's say I, I could put four different pictures, right? Let's say four different movie stars, four different articles and into one campaign. And the face, Facebook is going to automatically... Uh, distribute the most popular articles more frequently. So if this article got 16 clicks, it's going to cost me less money per 1,000 impressions. And if this article got, got only two clicks, it's going to start, uh, it's going to uh, automatically move this down to the bottom, and it's going to show this one the most frequently. So that's why it's really good. If, you, if you're running a campaign, have, uh, have six different articles in there. And uh, just, just to give you an idea of how it works. OK, fine. And so, like we said, we are, we're able to, um, uh, we have so much, 38,000 people uh, you can contact with, with just 150 shekels. So the question is, what do you want to, what do you want to offer them? What do you want to show them? Do you want to just give them an article? Do you want to try to give them something for free? Maybe a free ebook, a free video. And I think uh, a really good motto uh, that I heard once is, um, lead with generosity and follow up with care. And I thought that was a really good phrase that um, if those 38,000 people, you want to already be thinking, you don't want them to land on your site and then go away and never come back because that's going to be a waste for you. But if you offer them an email, uh, an ebook, then you can also say, I'm only going to give you this ebook if, uh, if you uh, give me your email. That, or give me your, make it sound natural, right? Give me your email, and that way we'll be able to send it to your, um, to your, uh, send you the ebook to, uh, to your personal email box. Little do they know that their email is going to go into your email marketing system, <laughs> and you're going to spam them with another <laughs> nine to ten, nine to ten automated email <laughs> over the course also, of the next two months. <laughs> you can offer them also great things like um, competition. Or okay. Yeah, offer them stuff. Yeah, whatever you think offer of, be creative stuff. over here, right? But offer them something. Lead with generosity. Follow up with care. It, that's in terms of the content idea. Okay, fine. Fine. So now we're talking about the building, the trust, and, and nurturing your leads, right? So once you get their email, then uh, um, all the email marketing platforms are also have this uh, feature of automatic emails, which is a really nice feature. What it does is every... Uh, Every single time that a, that a person subscribes to your newsletter, they're going to get these automated messages. And you can set this up in your email marketing platform. They're going to get a welcome email uh, immediately after they sign up. Right? Send at immediately. And you can already, in your marketing platform, you're going you're to set up the content and the title and all the images. Um, most of the time, if you add too many images, it's going to go into their promotions tab. So I just want to take a short survey. Um, do most people here use Gmail? Yes. Okay. And um, uh, which? Uh, how many people here have have three tabs? The primary, social, and promotions. Mm -hmm. Five tabs. Actually. Okay. Fine. So about half. How many people have only one tab that all the mail goes into? 
Okay, fine. There are very, very few. So what we see is that the majority of people that use Gmail have three tabs, right? They got the... Default. Okay, fine. It's the default. Now, the, the thing is, the automated emails, right, the email that, that gets sent out a day after the lead is generated or a week after or two or three weeks after, a lot of times it's going to go into the promotions tab. And uh, um, I worked in, I was the content writer in the past, and, uh, and it's just not a good feeling because you're working so hard on your content, and when, you, and when you realize that all your emails are actually just going into the promotions or the spam, nobody's reading it, and you're just not continuing to the correspondence. So, how do you, how do you check it? so that's a good question. How do you get your email into the primary tab, right? Okay, yeah. that's a really good question. That's what you need to be thinking time. about. It's going to be a lifelong struggle also, think, because things might reply, change also. If somebody replies to the email, they have a good chance that it will get uh, into the primary. Okay, that's also one option. Or if they drag your email from the promotions into the primary tab, then you could also, the, the yeah, next emails will yeah. go there. No, um, there should be uh, some number of people who should do that. So you actually need to put uh, something, a quiz or something that you need to reply to your email in the ad or something. And but that's a good question. I think I think that the best way is um, is to focus on the platform. So I spoke with a guy who has a really good, uh, who was a really good uh, influence blogger. Pro and he problem, and you need to ask them a question, and they need to reply, and then you can put them. Uh, that's a possibility. I don't know exactly exactly how that works with the replies, but what I do know is two things. First of all. If you have a, if you're a meetup organizer, then the the emails go straight into the into the main thing, okay? Yeah, and uh, I think that's real that's a really good thing about meetup. By the way, the meetup organizer costs thirty dollars for six months. You get up to three up to three groups. I think it's really really fantastic. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So the first time when I uh, when I started doing the meetup, I initially just took full advantage. I was I was sending people a weekly email. I was so much suit as you would say. Oh, you're sending them going into the primary tab. I was waiting years in order to find the solution, and that was one way of doing it. One second. <laughs> And I'll tell you something oh, else. By the way, sense. Mailchimp, Mailchimp, it usually goes into your promotions tab. Mailchimp usually goes into the promotions. It's very, very popular, but most people just aren't thinking about it, right? You're usually just too stressed. The marketers just aren't thinking about it. So it's a, it's something to put on your agenda. And what about HubSpot? Maybe HubSpot. Also? I don't know so much about HubSpot. You have to do the testing. This goes back to the five emails examples. Yeah. If you have, if you, if you have five emails. If if you have five emails, then you need you can uh, set up fake fake Gmail accounts. Subscribe, right? First, go into the marketing pl platform. Subscribe. See if see where they're getting it to, right? And um, and that's important. So, but from what I hear, Aweber is good. That that goes into the promotions tab. I you can also check uh, um, in terms of uh, newsletters that you sign up. Where did it go into? If if the very, very small percentage that goes into your primary box, what are they using? So Aweber is really good for that as well. Okay, that's why I put a link to Aweber. And Aweber goes to primary? Or yeah, it goes into the primary, I believe. How can you make an email that they recognize as a meetup or something that goes to the primary tab? Okay, well, uh, so you need to choose, you need to do testing and try Aweber, because I think that that's good, and okay. that's that's all the answer Otherwise, that I can give you for now. Aweber. And meetup, become a meetup Aweber. organizer Aweber. also. Aweber. -E yeah, yeah, the link is in the presentation. I'll send it, I'll send it at the end. Okay, yeah. fine. Let's talk about LinkedIn. LinkedIn, um, I think that that's really good. <coughs> uh, let's say you have a, you, you have a company, or uh, you're working <coughs> in a company that has 10,000 emails. Okay, what you can do on LinkedIn is for every specific LinkedIn account, you can, uh, you can upload 3,000 emails and you just go into your LinkedIn, <laughs> into you your LinkedIn account, email? yeah. Huh? What do you mean by email? Uh, e uh, yeah, leads, you, ah, fine. You, you yeah, in email your email or? database. Let's say you, you uh, over the years, it took you four yeah. to five years, you're really happy, now you have 10,000 emails, but the, major the vast majority of them didn't register and they just went away forever and they're just not responding to your emails. Who knows why, okay? But the thing is, on LinkedIn, <coughs> you go into My Network, Add Connections, Upload, upload CSV. I, I wrote, you can click on that link because it gives you all the instructions. And you upload an, e um, uh, an Excel file with 3,000 emails. 
and it's gonna it's gonna spam all of them. Okay. You can do it on Facebook too. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tried it on Facebook. I have really bad experience. With it. <laughs> okay. I just well, sent that's all my emails, and it was I didn't even think about who was in there. <laughs> and what what kind of experience did you have exactly? Like I was interviewing for jobs and then spamming them with my startup. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, good. So this guy's thinking outside the box. Okay, good. Great minds think alike. Fantastic. So like on Facebook, you can upload like thousands of emails. And yeah, yeah, retargeting. Yeah, yeah, retargeting. Yeah, retargeting. So I was like interviewing for so jobs. So actually, if I'm taking an uh, email list, you, yeah. you send an invitation to... Oh, Automatically. So I was like interviewing for jobs in That's the yachting industry. Really crazy, yeah. Nothing to do with tech, and I just dumped it to all my contacts, and then I realized like I just interviewed with people, and I just spammed them with my startup I didn't tell them about. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Huh? By the way, if, if you got likes on the, each photo, you can invite all of the users that like your photo to your page. It's a hidden feature in Facebook. That's interesting. When you were talking about LinkedIn, it's yeah. uh, your personal profile. It's not the company profile. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So the, the LinkedIn company profile, you have very, very limited uh, features, unless you want to pay for it. And um, I, I think that the LinkedIn company profile, it gives you barely anything. I don't even think you can do messaging to your followers. It's impossible to get followers in the, in the first place because they charge you a ton of money just to advertise on LinkedIn also. Um, I think that the best is, yeah, just um, use your own profile, uh, maybe use the coworkers' profiles, and um, just break up the, if you have a, a 10,000 emails, you're going to break it up into, into chunks of, let's say, 2,000, whatever, the max uh, upload is 3,000, 3, and just send it out, and I think it's a really good way to build, build brand, build, uh, build trust, and it's totally for free. You may have seen on LinkedIn, some, uh, you may have seen in your email box, sometimes you get an email that says, uh, uh, Jane, uh, Jane Jones would like to connect with you on LinkedIn. And if you, you can put in the, in the headline, uh, Jane Jones at, uh, or customer success at, um, uh, you know, pizzahut.com. And when they get that email, the P, if you put in a, a URL there, it's going to be clickable in Gmail. At Jane Jones at www.pizzahut.com, and their, that email is going to have pizzahut.com. They can click uh, and go to and your website straight and from there. Jane Jones, customer success at Pizza Hut, and hear about her. <laughs> Sounds good. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the power of storytelling. This is getting into the character stage, you, also. You're reminding me of a tip <laughs> I heard from somebody uh, from a podcast that you said even if you have a one man company, you should uh, uh, make it look uh, like a serious company by uh, having a uh, Email addresses there of people that don't exist. <laughs> okay. So now you can create these five or six people and then use their LinkedIn account. <laughs> also, that's smart. And then you have a big uh, company yeah. site with lots of LinkedIn. It's not a fake also, account, yeah. it's a test account. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, it's uh, right. a speed personality. This is the marketing person, this is the HR person. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That was also that was also what the circle of trust again w was about was putting the morality on the shelf right for the next half hour also. Can you create your <laughs> own unique uh, system that actually bulk mail? Uh, actually, I don't know exactly. It's really simple. That's already something else. That's that's a different. It's a different agenda. You said moral, and basically yeah. I think well, advertising is anyway. moral anyway. So also a good point. That's also a good point. Okay, let's see. Fine. Uh, let's see. <laughs> All right, fine. So I wrote over here uh, an interesting line. It says, do you have a referral policy set up for your message or brand? I think something, I saw, I saw a talk by uh, the chief marketing officer of LinkedIn, and they said that when, uh, when they first made uh, the platform, they were already thinking, how can we get our, our brand advocates to, um, to market for us? And I think that that's a really good feature if you have, uh, if you have an app or a website, that with the onboarding process, they tempt you to invite your entire email database. And I think that that's also, uh, if your product uh, or service matches that kind of, of uh, feature, so definitely throw that in there. Uh, Facebook used it also. Uh, they, they, uh, as soon as you sign up, they, they kind of put like a, a, a big blue, blue button that says add my email contacts, and then you only see like this very hidden text that says no thanks on the side. 
and they kind of, uh, the, the graphic design is meant to tempt the user mm -hmm. to think like, oh no, in order to move forward, I need to invite my entire email contacts. And yeah, I think that that's also. Like in, in iHerb, for example, that they give you uh, uh, some discounts if uh, you refer people and they give Also you an idea. Yeah, they also give an them idea. Discount, so basically it's kind of a yeah. mutual. Uh, so the referral, discount. yeah, the referral policy is just a, a universal, universal strategy idea. Just uh, think about how you can apply it. Yeah, what's up? There's also a small hack in Hotmail. Okay. Uh, if you log in with Facebook, you can get all of your Facebook's uh, email. Okay. If you uh, if you register a new account in Hotmail ah. and then connect it with Facebook, you get all of their emails, if, even if it's locked. Wait, okay, wait. that's interesting. You, you too. can yeah. actually through okay. uh, Hotmail, ah. Facebook, <laughs> 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 Okay. That's an interesting idea, how you can get your emails. Fine, so you start thinking in terms of that, because the email database is an asset at the end of the day, and you can start measuring how much conversions you're getting from every source and play around with it. Okay, let's talk a little bit about retargeting. We only have another half hour, so let's keep going. Yes, let's continue, yes. Okay, cool Fine. of New York. Yeah, exactly. Okay, retarget your site's visitors anywhere on the web. So uh, there's this thing called retargeting. You may have seen it sometime. Let's say you, you go onto, uh, onto a site called bookdepository.com, right? <coughs> you go in there, you, uh, you uh, put two items into your cart, but you, the, the cust you never actually made the final purchase because you just you changed your mind at the end. You might notice about a week later, all of a sudden, you're seeing uh, bookdepository.com ads on different sites that you're visiting. You might see it on the New York Times, you might see it on Facebook, you might see it on LinkedIn, on uh, <coughs> just random, random sites you see, uh, you see the ads. So the way that that works is that the site that you land on, when you landed on bookdepository.com, they put something called a retargeting pixel into your cookie box. You ever see sometimes it says clear my cookies, clear my, uh, uh, that, that's the way that it works is that they put a cookie on, on your browser, on your computer, and that way they can retarget you anywhere. So let's say if you have a site that's getting 2,000 hits um, uh, and, and nobody did anything, you may want to be thinking to yourself, well, I saw 2,000 people that landed on my website. The question is, uh, can I, if they didn't give me their email, the question is, can I, can I uh, resend them my message uh, at a later date? And the, uh, the, uh, the concept is, yes, you can. You can retarget them anywhere. Uh, we'll look at the cost also for how much that, that costs. There's also a service called Google Remarketing, and there's also a site called AdRoll, and a couple of other competitors also. And you can check out AdRoll also. And so for example, this is uh, for a company called uh, Inter uh, Top Israel Interns. And you'll see that it appears on NewYorkTimes.com. And I think this is a really cool uh, thing because um, for in the past, let's say uh, 20 years ago, how much, how much money would it cost you to put an advertisement on, new, on the New York Times? It might have cost you something like $10,000 and uh, or whatever, $50,000, and you don't even know who you're sending it to. Um, it, it, it's, uh, it's just people that are interested, let's say, in the sports section, if you advertise there. But in this specific case, um, you're advertising on NewYorkTimes.com. There, you can choose how much money you want to spend. If you only want to spend twenty dollars or fifty dollars, and you can say, "I only wanted to go to people that landed on my website already, people that already had that first interaction." And let's say a week later, all of a sudden, they're seeing my brand next to the New York Times. So it's a relatively, uh, so basically it's an interesting say, concept. I have a cookie of my site, which is this address, and basically. Check that uh, you have a cookie. It doesn't matter. They cannot read the cookie, but they can. They read the cookie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say uh, 3,000 people land on my website. So that means there's 3,000 people with my cookie on uh, on their on their local computers, and I can trigger the retargeting. So no matter where those people, where those three people go go on the web, I'm gonna hunt them down. I'm gonna get my my message get back on there, and they're gonna see me again. Believe uh, believe it or not. Right, so you can explore that, huh? No, I think they might be able to see it. Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, have you experienced um buying remarketing ads on like um similar businesses like sites? So like you sell like furniture and then you go to.
see from decorators' website. You can't you also purchase your targeting ads on their site to target their customers? Okay, so uh, that's a possibility. That's a possibility. Uh, you'd have to look into it a little more carefully. The thing is, those 2,000, 3,000 people that land on your website, you don't know exactly where they're going to go. They could go anywhere. There might be like a really small chance that they'll go on this specific site, but I think you can start looking into the dashboard. Um, uh, I think they have a free trial, but, and uh, start researching it a little bit. You may also want to be thinking about cap also, frequency cap, because uh, you don't want them to see, uh, you don't want a specific person to see like, you know, 50 ads every week. You want them to just see maybe one ad a week, that kind of thing. So you have to be careful with it also. Okay. <clears throat> Fine. And this is a little bit about the cost. Okay. Let's have a look at how much it costs. Uh, Let's see. Okay, so a couple of the terms, first of all, that you may see on the different uh, ad uh, networks is something called click-through rate. Uh, what percentage of the people that saw the retargeting ad actually clicked? And you'll see it's actually pretty low. Only 0.7% of people will actually click. Over here, it's 0 0.26, 0 0.21. Uh, how much did it cost me for 1,000 impressions? And you'll see it's already getting a little, a little more expensive. It costs $7. Um, and again, it's the same concept. It's probably the same concept. The higher, the higher they, the click-through rate, usually the cheaper it's going to be. Um, so you'll see that 0.7% uh, actually clicked on the ad. They found the ad relevant, and that's why the the network charges you less money uh, for a thousand for a thousand impressions. Uh, you have to look into it. Wait one second. Let me think about that for a second. Actually, you know what? No. So you paid one dollar or seven dollars? I mean, uh, for, forget that line for a second, but th for this one it cost me, bottom line, it cost me $7 for every 1,000 impressions. It cost me $6 for 1,000 for that specific ad, right? Because this is the different, uh, every single website um, will give you different uh, banner sizes, right? So it's, you're going to have, uh, you have a top slot, which is a wide 600 by, by 1,500 photo. And sometimes on mobile, you're going to have a much smaller image, and, and sometimes you have a side ad, so that's got to be, um, it's got to be a rectangular shape or a square shape, and that's why you need to upload all these different ads in order to fit it into different uh, spl slots and everything. Okay, and it gives you some of the measurements, so How you much can did look you into that. The click? I, don't I didn't play according to the click. There's two types of models. You could either pay for every single click, or you could pay for a thousand the impressions. Question. Yeah. So you'd have Why to do a little bit of the math and research it. Why it said $1 yeah. Ah, cost per click? Okay, that's an interesting thing. It's another metric there. It cost me $1 per click, uh, so it does kind of add up. Yeah, it's just based on the conversion. So you know. paid $8? It could something? be something. It's what? You think it's based on the conversion? Yeah, so even if like you didn't do it by click, it, okay. it shows your um, click-through rate, and it's, like, if you look, the math adds up. So okay. if you do a $7 times, you see what do you mean, $7 times what? So, like, based on the conversion rate, you paid a dollar per click um, there. The only reason there's no cost per action is, I guess, you didn't label an action. Else it probably uh, okay. would have been um, a dollar as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay, so, okay. Like, depending on how, so you're just going, let's say you're paying based on impression, you'll have a conversion rate to click, which it will track. So, it can tell you how much you paid per click as well, even though you didn't pay by click. Oh, so okay. Okay, yeah. It's a virtual... Uh, yeah, so you can look into it. Yeah, you, as you see, you get a lot, a lot of numbers into it, for sure. Do some research into it if you're interested in exploring it further. I just wanted to get, give you guys a rough overview so of, only, of how much it costs and so on. To Retarget people on, on different websites, yeah. yeah. They landed, on, they landed on your site, let's say 2,000, 3,000 people, you can retarget them anywhere on the web. But how do they, they have, know in which website I would They already be? have partnerships with about 97% of the internet. They have, uh, yeah, they already, 97% of publishers are already, uh, are already within this program and everything through different networks. They're all combined and it just sends it out to the right, to the right site. So, pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Most of the time you'll be able to get them. Okay. And it's less. It's cheaper with targeting than. No, uh, I don't know. It's a little expensive. You have every single specific. Every <coughs> case is specific, and we'll talk a little bit about Google Analytics at, okay. at the very end. I think we're we're almost at the Google Analytics part. Okay, fine. Uh, and there's uh, these other two sites are really cool. This one is called How to Automate Your Tasks Across Your Apps. So, for example, 
uh, there's a site called IFTTT because, uh, for example, um, if I if I have different apps uh, controlling different elements, like let's say I have uh, I have WordPress um, WordPress on the website, and I want every single time that uh, that somebody puts puts uh, signs signs up through my WordPress site, I want it to to send a message to Mailchimp to trigger an event and uh, and to send out an email. Essentially, what it, uh, I'll give you a different example over here. What it does is it, it, uh, it allows your apps to talk to each other. There's, this is another example. I think it's a little clearer. There's something called RSS feeds. So RSS feeds is, is something that a blog will have. Let's say it's a, it's a popular blog. They can allow people to subscribe to new posts. And that works via RSS feeds. So every single time that, uh, that a new blog post comes out, the RSS uh, event will, uh, will kind of uh, will, will be triggered and a new post um, will, will be sent via RSS. But uh, RSS can also work with your LinkedIn profile. So what, what this specific task does is, if a new feed item happens on uh, angularjs.blogspot, then share a link on Alicia Kramer's LinkedIn profile. So that's a really cool thing. Essentially, uh, you can pretend to be reading your industry-related content even while you're sleeping, okay? <laughs> I'm trying to, to think about how to explain this. <laughs> Did, did, did okay. most people understand it? Most people didn't understand what I'm talking about, right? You can uh, read, you read notes and then post them on your LinkedIn account or stuff like that. This is, the thing is, even if I don't read, no, <laughs> read thank you very much. Can you adjust based on the time? Like, so it's not posting while you shouldn't be asleep. <laughs> I don't know exactly about it that. It shows you're so devoted to your job. You're going to be like, wow, this guy's reading at 3 a.m. Every night. At 7 a.m., at 8 a.m. <laughs> Save your song. Exactly. Yeah, actually, can you do scheduling for such things? Uh, can you what? Can you control the time of the post? Yeah, like scheduling. Uh, you might be able to do it with different apps. You might be able. They have a specific app that's specifically for that, uh, for the RSS and social networks thing. Um, cool. You might be able. You have to do some research onto it. But so the thing is that most blogs will usually come out with, let's say, uh, a new article twice a week. Right, so every single time that they that they publish a new post, it automatically gets sent out to my personal LinkedIn, LinkedIn, uh, with the description and with with the link. So it just it uh, it's uh, it's good for branding your specific LinkedIn profile. If you if you made Twitter, right? if you made the fake LinkedIn <laughs> profile, <laughs> you want those people to just to be doing stuff, right? <laughs> You have five fake LinkedIn profiles that you uploaded all your email leads with, right? <laughs> You're thinking to yourself, what are you going to do? You're just going to log into those LinkedIn profiles and, and start sharing content? It takes a lot of work. So most of the time, if you just automate the task, you create the fake profiles <laughs> with the same emails. But that's not just something for <laughs> You're pretending to be different people. It's a mess. <laughs> so it's a good way to stay organized. Uh, and keep on the facade, keep up the smoke and mirrors. <laughs> you can use it not only LinkedIn, right? You can use it on Facebook or some other, like, to, oh, to make it send it to LinkedIn or... Oh, yeah, you could also auto-post on link on, uh, on Facebook. I think you can, or your Facebook group. If you have a Facebook page that you, that, uh, you already have a following, but you just don't have the time or energy to, uh, to post on all those different mm -hmm. assets. So cool. this is a nice way and to have your apps talk to each other. It's a nice thing to explore, and there's also the link to it in the uh, presentation. It, it has a specific tool, okay. Yeah, this, this uh, hopefully, hopefully this makes it a little bit clearer because uh, it gives you an idea of what you can do with it. You could also subscribe to other people's, uh, other people's pages. So uh, let's say I'm a really big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk's uh, YouTube page. So I say um, every single time, or the Gary Vaynerchuk Facebook page, any time that, that a Gary uh, post something on his Facebook page, you need to have a trigger and an event. So if this happens, then I want you to do this. So every time Viner Chuck posts, I want you to send out a, a, an email to my entire subscriber list in MailChimp uh, with the post. Or uh, I, every time that Viner Chuck posts, I want you to send it via Gmail. Or it works the other way. Um, if, um, if you have a specific email account, you could set this app as the trigger and a different app as the event. So every time I get an email from uh, Jennifer Collins, I want you to share the content of the email on, my, uh, on this specific Facebook page. Or, 
you start understanding that you can be a little more creative, and it's a uh, it's a nice thing to explore. I thought it could be helpful for you. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's an alternative to IFTT. This is to give you an idea of all the apps that are able to actually talk with each other and you can automate tasks. So uh, sometimes you may want to do it. Of, uh, privacy, like, so if I place some, something in Trello yeah. and uh, someone subscribes to, to How does it work? Uh, you have yeah. to do research for which one? Which, uh, like, like Trello. You, uh, you can use Trello? Trevor? Trello. 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 Trello boards. So you can use it to. Travel boards? Trello. Trello in the middle here. Yeah. yeah. You can use it to place oh, some, some okay. personal uh, stuff. So what, what you do is uh, do a Google search, Trello Zapier, because this site is called Zapier, and then it'll show you a list of all the Trello events which can trigger an action or all the spe specific actions. Okay. Yeah, have you have to do research into every specific app. What are the triggers and the actions? They will offer you uh, the most common uses with uh, the three specific tools that you can search. And so but you, may, you need to make uh, something that you would like to share, like, uh, for everyone, you need to mark it up somehow, I believe. That, that's a you can idea. look into it, but yeah. it's a, the, the idea is to give you a rough idea here, and you mm -hmm. can look into it a little bit, start experimenting, cool. start playing with it. The link is there also. Originally, the IFTT was built as an app that you can use to automate things on your phone, like if you get email, you want to automatically uh, tweet, stuff like this, okay. on your phone, but I think mm. it became it, it much bigger. bigger yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, fine. Um, fine. And now we're talking a little bit about Bitly. So um, let's see, what did I write? Get a feel for your audience by understanding which links they're clicking on. Use a branded shortener plus rink link retargeting. Okay, so uh, I'll just give, um, give a, a heads up. Actually, I work for this company called ClickIM. I worked for them in the past. Um, maybe about six months ago, and, and uh, they're kind of uh, alternative to Bitly. They do something similar. It's link shortening and link tracking. So um, Bitly is also re really good for this. I put a link to Click I Am just uh, because uh, they're nice people. Also, what is but what is so bit, uh, what's, tracking? What, what's what Bitly? Do with the tracking? Okay, fine. So let 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 me explain. The main idea over here is uh, let's say I have an email list, right? Um, so if I send out an email to 500 people, I want to know, uh, and let's say that email had five links on it, three links on it, yeah. right? <clears throat> I want to understand my audience, so I'm going to turn each of those emails into a bit.ly link. Yeah. Then, so uh, let's say about, about five days later, Sorry. yeah, you know five days you. later, I go into my bit.ly account, yeah. and I check which link got clicked on the most. Every single time that a link gets clicked, I, uh, I get information. So, for example, in this specific case, uh, I sent out uh, one specific email, let's say, had these three links, right? And I see this one got 46 clicks, this one got 41, this one got 12. So that means my audience is less interested in this type it's of content. It's analytics for clicks, <laughs> analytics yeah. for, for uh, shoppers. Yeah, analytics for clicks. So I see, I saw the YouTube video, people were really interested in this in a previous meetup, so that's why I said, okay, this meetup, I definitely need to have the YouTube video because people like it. Mm -hmm. So uh, so that was popular, and it gives you an idea of, of uh, which type of content you want to have in the future. Now, a lot of times if you're sending out an email, you're just going to be thinking in terms of the moment, right? You just want the email to get out, uh, and you just want, want the message out there, and that's it. But I think it's really important, plan ahead, Right, and that way you have that long-term strategy. Getting back to that strawberry plant, Stephen's got a lot, a lot of strawberry plants. By the way, the reason All right, the inventory is massive. <laughs> it needs a home, right? Those right. strawberry plants need a home. So think in advance. Have patience in terms of your audience and get How to many know is them. Strawberry plant? I don't know, ten to thirty shekels. Okay, good. Yeah, good. Yeah, we got interest. Company? This is the interest. Now, next is the retargeting stage. Yeah. Right? <laughs> retargeting. <laughs> okay, so what I'll do with this guy is I'll send him an email with that pixel on the link and <laughs> track him down where, no matter where he goes. Oh, yeah? By the way, there is a difference between tactics. There's a link in the presentation, so just click on it and add him as a friend. <laughs> there is a difference between tactic and a strategy, and the yeah. strategy you need time to do. Yeah, exactly. So in exactly. a project, you need to know those differences also. to manage a great project. Exactly, exactly. Good. And we're almost at the Google Analytics well, section. Hey, the guys, there's David Schling down, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. He oh. came to the previous meetup. Thanks a lot, David. We appreciate your support. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we appreciate you as the member of the Circle of Trust and the... <laughs>
<laughs> and the community. Okay, so this is a really cool uh, a, a Chrome extension for Google Analytics. Uh -huh. uh, okay, and it's um, uh, this is the Meetup page, by the way. Meetup is an awesome return on investment. What is the name of the Meetup? Like this one is called Everything JavaScript. But it, it's uh, Meetup gets a lot of traffic depending on the niche. It's getting really good traffic for the tech and. Uh, and coding niche, so that's uh, it gives you an idea of how many people landed on the site. And, and Meetup.com has a has a, a Google Analytics plugin, and then you have the Google Analytics Chrome extension, and that's really cool that you can always Wait, you just can get it on quick. Sites that you don't own? No, you can you can no, uh, no. only on sites you own. Okay. Meetup.com happens to have the that analytics, but if you have a site with Google Analytics already installed on it. Then you can set up the Chrome extension and. Uh, only if you own. Sorry. Yeah, only if ah, you own okay. the site. Yeah. But you can do it in a similar way with the Chrome extension as well, and then you can okay. uh, look at the competition. Ah, uh, okay, that's interesting. I didn't you know that. You don't need to, to own the, the website. Ah, that's interesting. Okay, that's interesting. Good. So the link is there to the extension. And finally, we get to the source medium tab on Google Analytics because uh, we said that. Uh, you want to be measuring everything. You want to be measuring from the top of the funnel all the way down to the retargeting stage and finally to the final conversion. So what you can do on Google Analytics is set up something called conversion goals. So you can do some research into it. What it does is, uh, let's say my main, uh, let's say my main uh, business um, concern is getting people to make a purchase. I want people to, in this example, Purchase, uh, purchase an e-guide, right? Purchase an e-book, whatever, an e-guide. I can see over here what percentage of visitors actually made the purchase and where they came from also. So you'll see over here, people that came uh, from Facebook, um, about 0.12% um, bought the, bought the e-book. I see over here, people that came from my email campaign or from my Pinterest advertisements, this, this is how many conversions I got. I got 45 conversions from Facebook, and I got two conversions, uh, two conversions from Pinterest. So what you can do after that is you kind of do the math. Uh, let's say you do the cost per action, right? And I say, okay, I, and then you have to start uh, doing the math. I, if you spent 150 shekels on Facebook, and it gave me 45 conversions, so it says that every single, uh, every single conversion uh, it cost me about uh, yeah whatever three three dollars right it cost me three dollars per conversion and then you start doing the math uh, from every single one of your investments so that's a really good really important thing to do because um, if you're not actually measuring how many people are are actually converting so you're just going to be shooting in the dark you're going to be wasting money and an another thing is in terms of uh, how long they're staying. So let's say from my Facebook, I, I, I was very impressed that I got uh, uh, 200 clicks for, for whatever, 150 shekels, but then I start looking at it over here, I start to think to myself, how many percentage of those people bounced? So bounced means they didn't interact with the page at all. How many percentage of the Facebook audience, right? so Facebook people, most of the time they have ADD, right? they're reading a lot of, a lot of stuff, if you uh, think to yourself also, when you're, when you're reading an article posted on Facebook, how long do you spend on it? Maybe about a, a minute, but on the other hand, if you're, if you're on a website that's for a specific niche um, and you start doing those affiliate uh, buying that we talked about beforehand, how much, how much is that costing you for gooverseas.com or Mr. Money Mustache? And then you start, uh, you start doing the numbers and you start to understand a little more. And uh, you can also uh, read that article over there to, to read more a little bit about it. I just want to talk, now I'll just do a, just small, quick, uh, quick a small Google Analytics uh, tutorial, uh, two minutes on Google Analytics. Yeah, okay. what's up? Uh, I just wanted to add here that if you have high bounce rate and you are really measuring uh, how long people stayed on your page, okay. it makes sense uh, at first to segment out uh, people who have bounced because otherwise, if uh, the person has bounced, uh, the session duration is not uh, recorded. It will be recorded like zero. Okay. Uh, not even if the person stayed like 10 minutes on your web page and didn't interact and then left, it will be recorded as zero. So if you have like 60, 70% uh, bounce rate, 
uh, make sense to use the segment uh, for non-voluntary. Mm, interesting. Okay. So just uh, in, when you're with your calculations, you should segment out all of your uh, all of the bouncers. Yes. Okay. So it, it doesn't. If, if someone goes bounces and comes back, it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't count anything. the session duration. Like uh, for example, I came into your website, spent there ten minutes, but didn't go anywhere else and just left. I will be bound, so my session will be bound, and uh, my session won't be recorded. So you, uh, this ten minutes won't be. Sorry, March twenty. Do you do a mixed panel for uh, web search? Because I use mixed panel. Well, it's better for Facebook app. Analytics. It's nice. So it's mixed panel. Facebook Analytics. Mixed panel is not good. Oh, well, I'm not paying for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my own <laughs> I don't know. It has a script. My CTO, it changes my CTO. Mixed panel is premium. I think my CTO has you. an account. What? My CTO must have an account. Okay, you you have in Facebook Analytics, you have almost everything you have in mixed panel, but free. So okay. I use it, and it's easier than Google Analytics. Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, Google Analytics, I know there's a lot there, but um, okay, here's some of the important features. So this is the, the marketing blog that I, that I was writing, <clears throat> and it gives you a little bit of an idea. I set it up for ev uh, everybody that landed on it within the, p the past two years. And if you go into your into your overview, then you can see a lot of things. First of all, you could see the, I'm not sure if you could see the geo, but you can start exploring this also. If, if um, How many people here have a Google Analytics account? Okay, a good vast majority, right? So um, uh, there's a lot that you can do with it. I think there's, there's a lot of companies that also kind of make uh, really similar offerings to the Google Analytics, but there's a lot, a lot here. All it takes is just a little bit of research and you can find a lot, a lot of insights in terms of your audience, and uh, it's totally free also, which is a nice thing. So for example, I see what percentage of the visitors were, were browsing from mobile, what percentage were browsing from, from the desktop. Okay, that's pretty cool. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about acquisition over here. Let's say I go to all my, tra all my traffic, I can see uh, exactly where they came from, all right? Where, which ones came directly to the websites, which ones came from social platforms, which ones came from, from natural ser searches, okay? This is also a really cool feature. There's something called the Search Console and Queries, which is really interesting. This website is not really relevant, but for bigger businesses, it's more relevant. Um, so, uh, what it, account in Search Console and, mm. and prove that it is your website. Yeah, exactly. So Search Console is really cool. If you have if you have a long term goal to build up a website and you want uh, you want to start competing for natural Google searches, so it also shows you um, uh, what were the top keywords that people clicked before they landed on your website. So for example, I noticed over here I had an article about LinkedIn growth hacks, and you'll see over here that this was the top. This was the keyword that was most likely to get me to natural Google searches. And so when people did li did the website? search, oh, this what Google Analytics? No, the section of you can that trace uh, keywords. Ah, so it's in the acquisition section, and then you go into uh, qu uh, uh, something like queries. Okay, now you can do do a Google search on it. I just wanted to show you that it's possible and everything. So that's really cool, okay. and it shows you the average position that it's in, and uh, and so on. And it's got a lot of really cool stuff. Uh, fine, but <laughs> personally. I think, oh, maybe it shows you a little bit about the, your audience, right? Your demographics, their interests, the, the geo. Let's see if, that, if that's still there. Let's see if we get that. Okay, mm. sounds good. So that's also kind of nice. You get to see um, the locations where, where the majority of your audience is from. So, for example, this particular blog, the vast majority of them came from Israel, right? Uh, um, 4,000 from, from Israel, 18 browse the website from America and so on. Is this on your Facebook campaign? Uh, what do you mean the face? It's the same website. Ah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was the Facebook campaign. We can even look into the Facebook traffic. Okay, let's see. Acquisition. Um, sources. What is it? Behavior uh, conversions. Under, under sources. Let's see. Traffic. All traffic. Ah, nice. Okay. All traffic and source. Nice. Okay. Fine, uh, th this will pretty much summarize it.
I'll just have a quick look at it. Is it shows the top okay. uh, searches for your own website or in general searches? Um, it, it showed uh, when someone searched uh, this particular uh, search, my, my website uh, came up as number 45 or number 60. Because oh. the thing is, a lot of people will get really excited. I really want to get to the first page. But the thing is, it takes a really, really long time to just yeah. keep on pumping out but content. It has a long-term strategy. Website, you can use the AdWords search key. Um, no, AdWords key planner. Ah, okay. You can go up from the, to take okay. the two uh, titles to uh, upload your website ranking in each subject. Okay. So it's a great tool to use. Interesting. Okay, so Baba, we only have one more minute left, and uh, so here, here's some of the traffic statistics. We saw we have uh, 2,500 people came to it from Facebook. Let's look at. Uh, ooh, I want to see the, some of the. One sec. Okay, acquisition, behavior, and conversions. Okay, I actually didn't. I don't think I had any conversions for this. I didn't end up setting up setting up a conversion, but if you're trying to sell something, you should definitely try to set up the conversion. And uh, so the major the percentage of them that were new users, right? People that were brand new, it'll show you the percentage that bounced. Look at that, 90%. So that's really, really high. You usually want to try to get it as low as possible. People that were coming straight from Google, that's that's much better. And I saw with uh, LinkedIn, I just posted it a little bit in LinkedIn groups. Uh, that's that's really good. If, if for your specific niche, you join groups that have have to do with your target audience, and I posted it there, and you'll see that they stayed up, uh, they stayed a little. Uh, they were more likely to interact with the page. They stayed for two minutes. Ooh, look at that. Uh, average session duration, 33 seconds. <laughs> so all those people from Facebook that came, it, uh, they only stayed for 33 seconds, as opposed to the people that came from LinkedIn, they stayed for two minutes and nine seconds, the average person. So that's why it goes back to the beginning. Uh, we said you're looking at the top of your funnel, the middle of your funnel, and people that actually purchased. So you need to be really measuring all of those stages. If I see that initially, when I put that uh, 300 shekels on Facebook and uh, they only stayed for 33 seconds and they had ADD, then I'm not as interested in continuing to invest there. I may want to do a, a different strategy of trying to sponsor other bloggers or getting traffic from other places. And I'll use iSearchFound.com, I'll use SimilarWeb.com to find, try to investigate where my target audience is spending time online. That's pretty much uh, the session. I hope you guys had an awesome time, and thank you so much you. for coming to the meetup. Well, it's totally good to feel play. free to chill. Oh, I'll, I'll send it right now. Uh, what is, um, thank you. Uh, My pleasure, dude. If anyone wants help with Google Analytics, feel free to come on over. Also, feel free to chill a little bit. So, thank you. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thanks for coming.